this problem or that problem. It's just held you back and held you back and you've been restricted and you've had this obstacle and that obstacle and this problem and this report from the doctor and this from the economy and this issue in the relationship and this issue with the job. Some of you, you feel like the enemy has pulled you back and pulled you back and pulled you back and pulled you back. But you know, whenever you declare Jesus as your Lord and you transfer your trust that God, God, you take a hold of the bow. God, you take a hold of the situation. When God takes a hold of it and releases you, whoo! Being your best with Trey Johnson. Hello, this is Trey and Heather Johnson. We want to welcome you to Being Your Best with Trey Johnson. You know, the name of the show, Being Your Best, it comes from God's heart of you and I knowing Him and being the best us that we can be. Every one of us are looking for success in our family, our marriages, our business, our destiny. What we're called and created to do and being your best only comes from a true relationship with God. And so Heather and I, we want to welcome you tonight. You know, it's been on our heart to do some marriage teachings. We answer a lot of questions, a lot of uh, phone calls, a lot of people reaching out, just desiring help in marriages. And Heather, there is an attack on marriages uh, just because the, the devil's a liar. If you haven't figured that out yet, he is a punk. He does not fight fair, and Heather and I, we know that we don't have it figured out yet. We're a work in progress as well, but we do know that God's Word never returns void and that we're not going to quit. That's right. And that's something that we want you to make a decision with your spouse that you will not quit. You will not quit going after God. You will not quit being the best you you can be. You will not quit being a doer of His Word. You will not quit whatever you do. Don't quit. Uh, last week, I had a, an individual come into my office, and he was asking me, what, what am I fighting for in, in, in my marriage, in my life? And, and it just got me to think, and I think it's a question that every one of us have to answer. What are we fighting for as children of God? What are we fighting for in our marriages? And, and we're fighting for the one that we love. We're fighting for the blessing. We're fighting for our covenant with God, our covenant with our spouse. We're fighting for our children. We're fighting for the next generation. Not fighting with our spouse, but fighting for mm. our spouse. You know, Heather, I know it's your heart, it's my heart, that we both create an environment where we can know God and be the best us that we can be. And and I know that you are a warrior in the kingdom of God and you have fight on the inside of you when it comes to shoving it up the devil's nose. And, <laughs> and so in our marriage relationship, what does that look like to you? When I, when I say, what are you fighting for? What comes up on the inside of you? Um, well, I mean, I'm fighting for me. I'm fighting <laughs> for you. I'm fighting for our kids to break the generational curse, yeah. especially off my side, off of Chloe. I'm just, I'm fighting for freedom and just, just the blessing in the marriage. Um, like your parents, they did what, 52 years or is it 51 years? Uh, it's a long time. I think it was <laughs> 52 this year. Yeah. I think it was 52 this year. And that's amazing to me. I mean, my granny and papa had 50 years, but... Then my other grandparents had divorced at like, you know, 40 years or something. And so it's just, I just, I want the blessing in my family. I want Chloe to walk in the yeah. blessing of it. And I want our kids, your two kids to walk outside of that generational curse of yeah. divorce. And um, so we're, we're communicating from a place of we're a blended family as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so we know the struggles you think of the word blended family. It's not a microwave family, right, uh, no. but it's family. You know, God has a blended family. He has every color, every creed, every nation coming together as his family. And so God's word doesn't return void. It crosses all boundaries, right. all situations. And sometimes we can look at our families, we can look at our lives, and it can seem impossible. Right. It, it can seem just too hard. And, and so know that we realize where you might be coming from, where it looks impossible. But Mark 9, 23 needs to be a theme song for our families that all things are possible right. whenever we choose to believe. And... 
you know, we've had to stand on that, uh, yeah. you know, especially in the earlier years and it, it gets better <laughs> with time and, yeah. um, but just not quitting right. and, and being doers of God's word and applying God's word because God does want us free. Right. He wants our kids free, our families free, our finances free. And I just want to read John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. And Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If, notice the word if, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Now we've done it. I'm sure you've probably done it. You know what to do but you don't do anything with it. How many times do we go to church and we get the answer, but we don't do anything with it? We read a book and we get the answer, but we don't do anything with it. And right here, Jesus is saying, if we abide in his word, abide means to live in, to stay united to, to cling to, to hold on to, to be consistent, consistently constant. Don't you quit. Don't you give up. He says, then you become my disciples, a disciple, a disciplined one, uh, Heather, you did a powerful teaching uh, a couple years ago on being a disciple and, and share with us some things that jump out when you think of disciple. Well, I mean, it does mean a disciplined one and it's training. I mean, it's a process. You don't just wake up one day and you're a disciple. Just like my brother went into the Marine Corps. He did. He, I mean, he was automatically sworn in he's a Marine, but it took years of training. And then for him to be a combat vet and to go into actual war battlefield they trained for years before there was an actual war and then they sent them in but it wasn't I'm a marine one day and then the next day I know how to fight no I mean it takes weeks and years and days of training to become in marriage one yeah. to become a marine it takes years of training and then you just go up from there so in marriage for us to become one it's a daily process of forgiving <laughs> yeah. um, and loving and yeah. knowing the heart of your partner. Um, but being a disciple is following after Jesus daily, doing what the word says. And I said this last night when I was preaching, um, it seems in our culture today that there's a lot of gray area yeah. and there's not gray area in the Bible. It's black and white. What Jesus said is what he meant. And for us right. to do what he said and not take our version of it and twist it and try to make it fit our lifestyle, like that's so wrong. And then you get, deceived and into deception and before you know it you're off in a ditch um, but for us to follow after Jesus and to do what he says and to do be a doer yeah. of the word not just to hear but a doer we have to do it put action behind your belief and how many times do we get distracted just by what's going on in the world uh, you know I was visiting with a couple earlier today and we were just talking about you know the the power of communication and the, the discipline that it takes to keep getting the heart of the Father and, and being a disciplined one, whether it's finances, whether it's marriage, whether it's our physical bodies, that we're abiding in the Word. We get scriptures on marriage. Now, why would the enemy fight so hard against a marriage covenant? Well, one of the reasons is because this is supposed to be an example of our relationship with Jesus. When we come into the family of God, we're made one with Christ Jesus, and we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Well, when we become one and we say, I do, now this isn't one as the eyes of the world or the mind of the world where we live together and we just say, well, God knows our heart. No, no. No, it's covenant <laughs> right? where we come together as one. Now we become a new creation in Matthew 19, verses 3 through 6, it says, What God has joined together, let no man separate. Yeah. Why? Because together we are a powerful force upon the earth. Yeah. Together, Ecclesiastes 4 says, two are better than one. Deuteronomy 32, it says that one could put a thousand to flight, but two could put ten thousand to flight. There was these people, they come to Jesus and they're asking Jesus, well, can, can people just get a divorce for any reason? And Jesus said, well, from the beginning, that was not God's heart. Why, why would he say that? Because he goes back to God's original design for marriage, and that was the blessing. That was dominion. That was authority. In Matthew 18, verses 18 through 20, he talks about the power of agreement. Right. That whenever we are in agreement, he says, where two of us are in agreement, whatever we ask the Father, in the name of Jesus, it's done for us. So I want you to think about the original 
power of agreement to get God's will done on earth just like it is in heaven. Married couples, you have the power and authority to ward off sickness and disease and lack and any attack of the enemy. You have power together, more power together than we do apart. Right. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, he says, It is not good that man should be alone. Yeah. Think of the word alone. It comes from two words, all one. And I was so thankful that I was in the process of becoming all one. In my heart, you were in the process of becoming all one. Yeah. And then when God brought us together, we are still in the process of becoming one. Instantly, we became a new creation. Yeah. You know, we, we came into covenant but it's a daily process of being a disciple. It's a daily process of being in God's Word. You can have the bumper sticker. You can act. You know, you can go to church. You honk if you love Jesus. All that good stuff. And all that's fine and dandy. But what am I doing with what I know? Right. What are we fighting for? I want to encourage you to go to the website, TreyJohnsonMinistries.com, and order this teaching today. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And not only hear it, but sit down and begin to take notes, write it. There's power in the written Word. And while you're there, I want you to pray about becoming partners with Heather and I as we travel around the world and we share God's Word. Every person that's saved, healed, delivered, set free, you're a part of that. TreyJohnsonMinistries.com. Get your order today. That's such a powerful question. When I when I hear that phrase, what are we fighting for? I always think of David. Whenever he was on the battlefield and his brothers were questioning why he was there. Why was he watching the fight of the Philistines and the, the army of Israel? And, and David said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is your, is your purpose not good enough for you to fight for your marriage? Is the blessing not good enough for you to fight for your marriage? Is, is your kids not good enough for you to fight for your marriage? What are we fighting for? Are you kidding me? We're fighting for our family. We're fighting for our state. We're fighting for our country. Mm -hmm. You look at the attack on marriage, and the enemy is just trying to cause division in all forms and all fashions, from dividing us individually, dividing the marriage covenant, dividing the family, dividing the school system, Systems, dividing our government. Why? Because a house divided cannot stand. Let's make a decision that we're going to fight for something. We're not going to fight against something. We're not standing against war or against peace or against homosexuals or against... No, no. We're fighting for something. We're fighting for God's will. We're fighting for His kingdom to come on earth just like it is in heaven. We're fighting for victory. That is who we are in Christ Jesus if I wasn't sitting down, I would want to stand up and preach because we have something to fight for. <laughs> it's you. It's me. It's us. It's our families. Heather, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to let you you talk a little bit. <laughs> well, you, you're talking about fighting, and I think it's important because I was listening to some marriage teachings coming home today, that it's important that we're fighting the devil and not, right, each, not other. each other. Right. And because we can get in arguments with each yeah. other and it can be heated fellowship. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, like I know your heart and you know my heart and that we should know that when strife comes, it's not your husband or your wife right. trying to cause strife. That's a total tactic of the enemy. And I think people don't realize that that's how he comes in is through strife. And then they're fighting each other instead of fighting the devil. Right. Okay, like, yes, you did something wrong. And yes, it made me mad. But okay, I forgive you and let's move on. Instead of sitting there, hash it, just like going over it and yeah. over it and over and over it. Okay, identify the problem, talk about the solution and then forgive. But if it keeps coming up, I mean, you've got to identify the strife and you have to identify that it's the enemy trying to divide your family. I mean, look how much divorce is like, it's just, it's not a big deal to get a divorce right. anymore. Like, oh. People just quit. Yeah like, I, yeah, like, I don't love you because love is not a feeling. I don't know how many times we could say this, but love is a choice. Because yeah. there's days we, we're not, like, in love. Feeling the butterflies and seeing them, the birds flying around, right. chirping in the air. <laughs> right, the unicorns and the rainbows. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, it's not every day like that. I mean, but at the end of the day, I choose to love you. And yeah. I love you. And then the next day you wake up and your feelings are different. You're like, oh, man, I'm so glad I didn't quit. Because of your choice. Right, to stay. Yeah. I mean, but it is covenant. And where are you going to go? Like for me, when the Lord was talking to me about marriage and 
when we were having, you know, we've had several rough spots just because, <laughs> I mean, blended family and then the ministry on top of it and then me coming out of everything I've had to walk out of for my past. But the Lord clearly said to me, like, you can't do what you're called to do and I can't fulfill my purpose without my husband. But right. it's the same for people outside of ministry because right. they still have their own ministry, raising a family without divorce. That's huge. I mean, to tell you, I mean, because that's not the norm. Like it's blended family is the norm. Yeah. And that's not God's original intent. Will he bless it? Absolutely. Will he restore devastation? Yeah. Absolutely. And God's definition of restoration is making it better than it was before. That is a good definition. Thank you for being my restoration. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a battle. I mean, it really is, but we're not fighting each other. We yeah. should be fighting for each other and knowing that you're fighting the devil and keeping him in his place. And that's, you know, fighting for each other. It, it starts in our private prayer time. Yeah. You know, we're talking about the power of marriage. Well, to love each other when we see each other, we've got to love each other when we don't see each other. Right. We've got to fight for each other when it comes to the Word. How, how did Jesus overcome Satan? How did He put him in His place? He did it with the Word of God coming out of his mouth with it is written so I, I can't tell you how many times I've been praying for you and I know you pray for me but we're praying the word we're not saying Lord bless my cereal and my wife at the same time <laughs> I mean it's a little more in depth than that it's it's praying for the warrior that she is it's praying for the wisdom that she has it's praying for her purpose and destiny and letting Satan know you take your hands off of my wife you can't have her mind you can't have her heart you can't have her gifts you can't have this family I put my foot down in the name that is above every name and I draw a bloodline around the family and I let the devil know this is a victorious family and he does not belong here and you resist Resisting and it has to flee. Yeah. Doing it privately is part of loving yourself. And I'm not talking about a vain love. Right. I'm talking about Matthew 22, verse 37 through 40, when the lawyer comes to Jesus and he says, now out of all the laws, what's the greatest? And Jesus says, there's not one, there's two. He says, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, how well do you love yourself? Do you love yourself enough where you are renewing your mind? where you're learning how to pray, where you're forgiving, where you're releasing, you're letting go? Mm -hmm. Do you love yourself enough to keep running towards God and to realize that my wife, she has what it takes for me to be my best? That we're going to go through things, but that's the thing is don't just go through things, grow through things. Yeah. Grow through the problems, the obstacles. Don't run from each other. Don't run from God. Just like Heather said, it's not going to be better. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. It don't matter who you marry you're still going to be there. Yeah. Wherever you go, there, <laughs> there you, you are. are. <laughs> so there's the issues. They're still going to come up. So we might as well run to God and run to each other. You know, I've mentioned this before, but one of my favorite deals when we're doing marriage counseling and stuff is this, this deal of water, and I stick a tea bag in it, and what's on the inside begins to come out. Mm -hmm. And that's the way marriage is. God has designed the marriage covenant for us to be better, right? for us to live better, for us to have better, for us to become better with each other and with God. And so we want to just give you a few takeaways here as far as just fighting for your marriage, fighting for your purpose, fighting for your destiny. And so when we're having intense fellowship, that's what we like to call it sometimes, you know, it gets a little heated and stuff, is, is first and foremost, assure each other that we're committed. Yeah. You know, we're committed to God. We're committed to each other. You know, think of the de definition of commitment. It means a dedication to a long-term course of action. That I'm not just dedicated when it's easy. Right. You know, I'm not just going to be in this when we're, you know, the birds chirping and the butterflies. And But, but know whether <laughs> things are good or not good. We're committed to one another. What does that do on the inside of you when, when we know that we're in this for the long haul? We're not going to allow an argument or trouble tear us apart, but we're going to run to God and we're going to run to each other. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's comforting and it's just coming out of abandonment issues. You've never made me feel like you would abandon me. You've always been really good when we do have those heated discussions because you've been abandoned too. And so you had abandonment issues. And for us to tell each other, look, like I'm mad. I don't want to talk about it right now. Yeah. Can we talk about it tomorrow? Um, agree to disagree, but go to bed and just forgiving each other. Um, but knowing. And, and, and 
And so hold that thought yes. right there because I know that there can be religious people watching and you're saying, well, the Bible said, don't you go to bed on the rat. On the, don't all let the sun go down on your rat. Well, that is true. But there are times that that's not the best time to communicate and the best time to talk. So you choose to say, okay, will you forgive me? I right. forgive you. And we're going to calm down and we'll talk about this right. tomorrow. Now keep going. Right. Um, and so what was I saying? <laughs> Just about the abandonment issues oh, and us right. working together to yes. bring the commitment and assurance. Yes. And so, but us reassuring each other at the end of the discussion or in the middle or at the beginning, whatever, that we're not quitting, we're not yeah. walking away, that we are for each other and that there is a solution. Um, and then the pausing, like sometimes during those heated fellowships, people need a pause, especially yeah. females. We need, and guys I think need to process we too. Do. And sometimes to step away, process, let the emotion, because yeah. making decisions based out of emotion never works out well, right. because you don't feel that way after your emotions calm down. So there needs to be no rash decisions made in the heat of an argument or the heat of raised emotions, let it calm down yeah. and then come back and revisit it later. And, and during that time, when you do let things calm down, where's the first place that we go to God? Absolutely. To the word. We're disciples. We're disciplined one, right? And we, we first and foremost, we don't, well, Lord, you, did you see what she did? And she didn't know what's the first place that we need to look. Lord, help me. Yeah. Yes. is right here. What's my part? What can I do? What could I right. have done better? What could I have not have done? Um, always... I've learned to take it here first. I mean, cause right. I can point out, but at the same time, I mean, how am I handling myself? What's my part in it? Cause I have a part to play in everything. Right. And so what is my part? And that's, that's huge. Jesus said, Matthew 12, verse 33, 34, he says, we make the tree good and it's fruit good, or we make the tree bad yeah, and the fruit, fruit bad. bad. Right. What's he saying? We need to take responsibility for our part. And so assuring each other of commitment yeah. Us taking responsibility. If we do need to calm down, get with God, then come back together. We're running to each other. Remember, what are we fighting for? We're fighting for our destiny. We're fighting for marriage, our family, our covenant, the blessing. We're fighting not against each other, mm -hmm. but for each other. Right. And the willingness. I mean, how powerful is it that I know you're willing to go to God and you're willing to change you know I'm willing to go to God and I'm willing to change that no matter what we go through, we're willing. Isaiah 119 says, when we're willing and obedient, we eat the good of the land. Right. And willingness is, is huge. And this is something we say a lot is God help me to be willing, right. to be willing, to be willing, willing <laughs> to be willing. I want to read Colossians chapter 1 where it's just talking about the power of willingness. And this is Paul is praying for the church at Colossia. And he says that you may walk, live, and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him and desiring to please Him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing in by the knowledge of God with fuller, deeper, clearer insight, acquaintance, and recognition. And that's what God wants. He wants us to bear fruit. You know, He wants our marriage to bear fruit. So when uh, you, we have friends or family or anybody else needs help, we can point them back to the Word, what God has shown us. And some, some other things is just the power of expressing our hurt, um, you know, and, and not beating around the bush, you know, not suggesting but saying, you know what, babe, when this happened, it made me feel like this. And I know, guys, when we say, uh, you know, how do you feel about that? It's like, wah, 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 wah. It, we have to really work at, you know, what does it feel like? I don't know. Why would you ask me what, what that feels like? But learning how to tap into our feelings. Well, it made me feel rejected or it made me feel disrespected or it made me feel that way. It's a little more difficult for us uh, to tap into our feelings. We're not so much girls, you. Yeah, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> so a expressing the hurt, uh, not having, you know, surface, but, but direct statements. How important is that? Uh, well, it's very important, but also taking responsibility um, for my part and for your part is huge. And then when you want to address the person, when you're having, I mean, yelling, I don't know that 
that's, like I said, the emotions, I feel like they should be calmed down before you come to the person. But sometimes somebody can do something, but you're dealing with hurts from your past and what they did or what they said is not really what they did or what they said. You're looking through a broken filter. Okay. Um, and so I think it's important for, a. am speaking from a woman's point of view, you can say or do something and I'm and I can hear and see it completely different. And then when we sit down and we talk about it, that's not what you said and that's not what you meant. But because I'm looking through years of hurt right. or years of brokenness, and then once we talk about it, and so I think, once again, we go back to the communication, it's huge. After the emotions come down, coming back and saying, the woman being able to, as a woman, being able to identify, okay, like you did this and you said this, and I, this is what I'm hearing you say, but in you being able to calmly say, but that's not what I said, right. and that's not really what I did. Let's look at it now that the emotions are removed from it. But you have to be mature to be able to do that and not act like yeah. a little kid and want to kick rocks and throw your sucker in the dirt. I mean, and it's hard sometimes yeah. for a female because we get our feelings hurt and we're going to like just be female-ish. But it's important for the marriage part to, okay, pull up your panties, your big girl panties. I don't know. I not guys, guys, yeah, guys underwear. Please but... don't wear panties <laughs> yeah. or speedos, I'm yeah. just saying. <laughs> Keep going. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Moving <laughs> along. Um, but to be mature enough to talk about it like mature adults and not like little kids. Um, but that takes growth and that yeah. takes being a, a disciplined one, like with your emotions, being a steward over your emotions yeah. and not like letting them rule you. But that comes with years of. Have we messed up and done it wrong? You better believe we have several <laughs> times. Uh, but we're getting better all the time. Right. And that yeah. goes back to Ephesians 4, verse 29, when he says, don't let corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Yeah. But whenever we speak, minister grace to the one hearing. When you think about what God's grace is to us, it, it's his empowerment that allows us to walk in relationship with him. So when we learn to communicate, there's grace not disgrace, dis, the prefix dis, D-I-S, in front of any word, it reverses the meaning. Yeah. So instead of us coming together as one, when we don't communicate correctly, there's disgrace, and now we're going opposite directions. Mm -hmm. So no matter where you're at in your relationship, remember all things are possible yes. to the one who believes. And Heather said a very powerful word that we just want to reiterate, forgive Forgive, release, let go, forgive, release, let go. And the great thing about marriage is we get to practice a lot yeah. on forgiving each other, <laughs> releasing and letting go. Let's run to God, run to each other, and let's fight for our marriages. Yeah. I, I want to pray for you. Father, I just lift up each and every individual that's watching tonight. And Father, we stand in agreement for their marriage. We release the blessing of God over their marriage, over their kids, over their family, people that are watching, that are believing God for restoration. That Father, there's a work that begins on the inside of them tonight. Things begin to turn around, that they identify what they're fighting for. They want your will, the, your, your best, your restoration, your peace, your love, your joy, your victory. Father, I just declare that warriors rise up tonight, and we don't fight against each other but for each other in the name of Jesus. Jesus. This is Trey and Heather Johnson. <laughs> we want to tell you thank you so much for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless you guys.